The Rise Blade is a medium-sized fat tire e-bike that comes with just enough functions and features. With a relatively modest price tag of $1,700, the blade's performance manners to wow not only myself, but also my henchman Max, who built his own e-bike. It's really quite powerful. By the way, check out the X Nito helmet. It's got an LED light in front, another light in the back with three modes. They last up to 10 hours. There's a dial fit, so it fits your head perfectly. The fabric liner inside is removable and can be washed. It is a ventilator helmet but the main thing about this helmet is that it is made for electric vehicles that go up to 28 miles per hour or 45 kilometers per hour according to ex nito they designed this helmet to the dutch nta 8776 standard which has much higher requirements than the cpsc standard from the 1970s if you ride a personal electric vehicle be sure to check out ex nito at their website the blade comes with a 48 volt 720 watt hour battery which is rated for up to 80 kilometers or 51 miles or double that with a second add-on battery. During his test rides, Max weighed 76 kilograms or 168 pounds, rode mostly with full throttle in the highest possible mode, and had pedal assist disabled. The weather was a warm 31 degrees celsius or 88 degrees fahrenheit. Max got a range of 41 kilometers or 25 miles, about half of the rated range, which is to be expected considering the way Max rode. Rides. With pedal assist mode, Max estimates 70 to 80 kilometers or 40 to 50 miles is possible with just one battery. We didn't get the $400 second battery to test, but you'll basically double your range as it comes in the same battery configuration and capacity. You'll need to install a mount on the down tube and the second battery slides right on. The blade takes 5 hours to charge or 10 hours with two batteries and both are rated for 800 charge cycles. The blade uses a thumb lever throttle and a 12 magnet pedal assist sensor for control with a handlebar mounted LCD screen to display ride stats like speed, ride mode, battery percentage, and so on. The throttle is made of plastic and it gets the job done. Three power and seven pedal assist levels can be toggled with the up, down, and power buttons next to the throttle. The buttons are also used for navigating the settings menu to access features like cruise control, walk mode, lighting control, and a bunch more customization options. Speaking of lighting, there's a 120 lux headlight and twin tail light that's powered by the main battery. 120 lux should be plenty bright, and not having to charge the light separately is always a plus. But I would say it's like a more budget light. Doesn't look very nice. By the way, regarding the throttle, so this is the first e-bike that I'm covering on this channel. Okay, I've only tried two e-bikes, maybe three. But anyway, on all of them, the throttle is like very rough compared to electric skateboards. They feel like electric skateboard throttles from five years ago like the very old Ling Yi controllers. When you throttle up, there's like a lag and then it goes vroom. Max says that all e-bikes are like this. It makes me wonder like why are e-bikes like this while electric skateboards have such refined throttle controls compared to e-bikes. If you guys have any thoughts on that, leave a comment. Buffet. The Bafang 750 watt hub motor sits in the rear wheel. Despite the seemingly modest wattage, Max had this to say about it. Among all the e-bikes I've ridden, I think it should be the most powerful one. Rise claims a top speed of 32 kilometers per hour or 20 miles per hour out of the box, and 45 kilometers per hour or 28 miles per hour after unlocking it through the controller's menu. According to Max's GPS app, he was actually able to reach a little bit above those numbers. The drivetrain uses mostly standard components with Shimano rapid fire 7 speed shifters, a Shimano Acera derailleur, Welgo alloy pedals, and 180mm Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. These are entry level but decent components and if you want you can easily upgrade them yourself later. If you're a throttle only kind of guy like Max, I'd say this bike is a great value as you won't be paying for high end bike group sets that would probably see little use. The 180mm Tektro brakes have plenty of stopping power that can take you from max speed to standard still in just a few meters. The tires are 20 by 4 inches wide, made by Kenda, a large manufacturer of automotive and bike tires. They feature double walled rims, Kenda's knobby treading, and a case shield puncture resistant layer. These fat tires make the ride extremely cushy, but if you're not used to fat tires, they also feel really heavy. When you steer it, it feels a little bit heavier than the normal bikes. Like you're steering a really big tire in front, which is what you're doing. 
The blade has a Super 73 style frame made of 6061 aluminum with a built-in battery compartment on the down tube. The banana seat is pretty long and fits two people with a rack on the rear for mounting and carrying stuff. The almost BMX-like riser handlebars sit on a Mozo Fat 40 suspension fork with 60mm of travel and a hydraulic lockout for a stiffer ride. Mud guards are also included in the box and they're great for these fat tires because they kick up a lot more mud and water than normal tires. The whole bike weighs 70 pounds. It's kind of heavy but for e-bikes I think most people are not really looking for portability because e-bikes normally stay on the ground right like especially for fat e-bikes you're not looking for a portable one I think but if I'm wrong leave a comment the blade ships in a semi-assembled state, which means you need to assemble it yourself. I only mention this because most electric skateboards come fully assembled, but with e-bikes, it seems like they're usually partially assembled. Rise has a bunch of how-to videos on their YouTube channel to guide you through setup, features, and common issues. The blade has a 12-month warranty that covers the frame and electrical components, with a two-week defect-free guarantee covering the entire bike. Shipping and handling costs for warranty claims will be covered according to Rise, with exceptions for damage from misuse and negligence. Sounds pretty fair, pretty good actually. The Rise Blade is a great first electric fat bike for everyone. Reasonably priced, decent components, super upgradable, and great specs. Overall, I think this is a really powerful e-bike, almost like a motorcycle. This is the first e-bike that we've covered on this channel, so I hope we've done an okay job. I know we can do better. Let me know your thoughts about this e-bike and e-bikes in general. We're definitely going to be covering more. Bafang, 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 bafang.